Now let's talk about certificate authorities because these are the things that tend to confuse people the most on these exams and just in real life. Certificate authorities are quite simply the servers that generate the certificates and hand them out. But now there's two types and they're going to ask you about these on the exam and I'm going to show you a short animation here that I really think will clear it up for you and it will help you understand and be able to answer questions on the exam. There are two types of certificate authorities. There is a standalone CA or certificate authority and an enterprise CA. And we're going to do some pretty unique things with each one. Let's start off with a standalone. Let me go through this, draw this out, then we'll go back and draw some pictures on it and talk about it. Let's start off, we install Active Directory and all this stuff and we set up certificate services and we're going to make this machine a certificate authority. It is a standalone route. We are going to generate a certificate that we are going to apply to other machines. Now, this certificate, we may have gone to VeriSign or one of the other companies and we paid them a fortune and we said this is going to be the certificate from you guys that is basically tied to all of our web presence, but you are guaranteeing to the world that we are legitimate. We probably pay a pretty good bit for this. That certificate is applied to that machine. Then we set up our enterprise certificate authorities. Now these machines are the ones that are going to generate certificates to all of our other users. To anybody who gets a certificate from us, they're going to come from these machines. Well, what we're going to do is, is we're going to connect these machines over the network and we are going to install this certificate right here on each of these machines. Now, any certificates that these machines hand out to anybody else, those certificates will also reference this one, which is also referencing this one. And so there's where our third party support comes from. But now we've got a problem. What if somebody comes in here and some 13-year-old hacks into our servers and does something to compromise our certificates, hacks into the certificates and causes problems? Well, at that point, our trustworthiness on the web is in trouble. So here's what we're going to do. Notice we generated this certificate. We used that certificate to certify these servers. And then these servers, based on that certificate, are going to hand out other certificates. Now we're going to take this standalone route off the network. The most secure machine you can have, there's two ways. Number one, take it off the network. It's going to be hard to intrude it. It's going to have to be a physical intrusion. The second thing is turn it off. And I guess there would be a third one, which is put it in the safe. Now, for some of these companies, if you'll think about the absolute root say a VeriSign, that machine is in a vault somewhere. It's going to be very hard to get to that machine and compromise it. Now, let's take a look at some things here that you need to be aware of on the exam. A standalone root doesn't have to be running Active Directory. We'll talk about this a little bit more in just a few minutes. But we're going to use that to basically create the root level security, the absolute end all proof of who we are and what we are. The standalone root can be on Windows Server 2008 standard. That's all you need to remember. It can also be Enterprise and it can also be Data Center, but if you'll notice the Enterprise CAs, which have to be part of Active Directory, they are part of Active Directory, these have to be either on Enterprise or Data Center. So watch for it on the exam. The only thing that can be Windows standard is the standalone root. Notice standalone standard. It can be enterprise or data center, but it can also be standard. Enterprise cannot be standard, okay? So watch for that on the exam. The next thing, we are going to set this absolute root certificate to expire, meaning we have to get a new one, in 20 years. Because we're going to generate that, we're going to take it off the network, and that certificate has been passed down to here. We spent a lot of money and time on this thing, and it is certifying our machines that any certificates they give out will also reflect VeriSign and tell the whole world that these guys are the real deal, they've paid the price and they're in the system and we know who they are. Our enterprise CAs are going to expire in 10 years and we're going to separate these by 10 year increments. 
Now this is a simplified version. In the real world, you may have another tier here. You may have a standalone and you may have another tier of certificate servers. And all that is, is the more tiers that we have of certificates, then the harder it gets for hackers or somebody to continue to intrude and damage certificates all the way back to the root. It helps us load balance giving out certificates and so forth. Now certificates are going to continue to get to be bigger and bigger and bigger in our world because we're going to start to use these things as online identities. A lot's going on right here in this one video. Now kind of as a review and to point out some things you need to remember. A standalone CA, Active Directory is not necessary. It can run on a member server or it can be in a work group doesn't have to be part of the domain. All we want from it is a legitimate certificate. Usually we're going to use a standalone as an internal route. Watch for that on the exam. Then we're going to take that thing offline for ultimate security to protect that certificate. Then the enterprise CAs, these are integrated into Active Directory. They're usually on a member server, not a domain controller, but they are part of Active Directory and they accept certificate requests from users. So our users will connect, they'll ask for a certificate, they'll get one, they now have it, and they can move through our network or wherever they want to go. So that's a quick overview of certificate authorities. Go back, watch that animation a few times, get that in your brain, and you will be able to answer a lot of the questions about certificate structures and certificate authorities and stuff on the exam, and it'll make sense in real life when you read this stuff, I hope.